Hi, this is Miss Andrea. I'm here in Kids Hall and I am bringing you a project courtesy of Wells Fargo and Hamill Foundation. And this is the Tower of Hanoi. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of it before. The Tower of Hanoi is actually a game. It's a really fun game, a challenging game. And I'm going to show you how to make your own. I'll tell you what the rules are. Now, the Tower of Hanoi was actually created by a French mathematician in 1883. But there's a whole legend behind it. Sometimes you hear people say, oh, it's these monks in a monastery and they had 64 golden discs and they moved the discs from one tower to the other. And there's all kinds of other myths that's involved with it. But we are just going to concentrate on having fun. So let me show you real quick um, the rules of the game. So you have however many discs that you want. Usually a good number is five to seven. Uh, I'm going to start with three just to make it easy. And the rules of the game are that you have a small disc underneath a larger disc and underneath that a larger one. You can only move one disc at a time and you cannot put a large disc on top of a small disc. So you would have to move it. And the whole objective of the game is to move all the discs from one rod to another. So in order to do that, you have to figure out how to move these strategically in the least amount of moves. Now I have all my discs on one. So I'm going to show you how to make your own Tower of Hanoi and then we'll go over a few of the, um, of the adding discs and how there's kind of a pattern to this. So one of the things I really love about this is it is hard, it is challenging, but once you figure it out, you're like, hey, you know why? Because when you figure out something that's hard like that, you open pathways in your brain. You, it, it's something that will help you not just with this particular um, game, but it's something that helps you in life because what you're really learning is problem solving and you're having fun doing it. And when those pathways open up, the next time you run across a problem, you're not like, oh no, I give up. Now your brain tells you, hey, how about this? Think about it this way. So it helps you learn how to think differently because all of our whole life is challenges and all of our whole life is learning how to problem solve those challenges. Might as well have fun doing it, right? <laughs> so I'm going to show you how to do it. So very simple. Um, these are the supplies that you would need. All you really need is some scissors, uh, some cardboard, or I made my little um, circles, my little discs out of foam board that's kind of thick, um, the foam paper. Um, you can also use the poster board that you buy at the store. Any of those will work. And I made a, a few of them out of the different things so that you could see. I made some out of cardboard. I made some out of the foam board. And then I made some out of the, the colorful foam. And all I did was I took lids of different sizes and then I just traced them and then I cut them out, which is really, really simple. And you can kind of see that, how I did that on this one. I just circled. I made a circle and then I took my scissors and I cut it out. And then on the inside, I just, Use my scissors, made a hole, and then cut on the inside. And so that you can make really easily a little hole in the inside so they can go up and down. Now all of the stuff you can find in your house. Then I took two pieces of cardboard and I didn't want to use hot glue because I don't want anybody to burn themselves. So I just put the two pieces of cardboard together using tape. And then I just used my scissors and I made a hole so that I could put my straw in. So I just took my scissors, I made a hole, and then my straw just goes right into it like that. And then I made three of them. You gotta make it far enough so that um, the discs have room. So this is like one of the big discs and that's how I figured out how far apart they need to be. So I'm gonna go over real quick how you would do something like this, adding them. And the trick is to not only move them to from one rod to another, but also in the least amount of moves. So let's give it a count. This is two. So I would move this one here. That's one, two, three. So it took three moves, right? Let's do another disc. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the first one was three. This one is seven. Let's add one more. Let's do four discs. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So the first one was three moves, the second one was seven moves, the fourth one was 15 moves. Do you see that there's kind of a pattern here? So the more you do it, I make it look easy because I kind of already figured out the pattern, but it'll be easy for you too if you keep on trying it. Remember, you're opening up those pathways. So it may be challenging in the beginning. Start with two, and then once you're real comfortable with two, then add another disc. And then once you're real comfortable with that, add another disc, and you'll start to see the pattern. And the more discs, you can make more than, I only made four, you can make seven, nine, you can make however many, 64. That will take you billions of years to do, so don't do 64. <laughs> but you can keep adding to it. And every time you do it, you're gonna start to realize that there's a pattern. This is kind of, for my older students, this is an algorithm. An algorithm is like a recipe, right? It's a set of instructions. And so if you're really good at this, you might be really good at computer science. You should look into that. And if you're not, it's okay. Everybody has different talents, but you should never give up because everybody is capable. Even if it's not the thing that they're interested in, everybody's capable of figuring out a puzzle like this. It's so much fun. You should do it and it's like hardly any materials to do. I hope you try it. This is Miss Andrea signing out.